Welcome to this Career Ready webinar on preparing for interviews. Understanding how to prepare for interviews and how to structure responses can be challenging. However, this webinar will cover some of the types of questions to expect, resources to use and the star structure for behavioural interviews. A little bit about the career service here. Um, we can offer assistance with uh, cover letters, resumes, key selection criteria and preparing for interviews. There are a couple of other aspects to our service as well. We can give you um, advice on your career options, uh, that is via a consultation appointment and advice on uh, other aspects of employment, so strategies, finding part-time work, finding internships and a range of different employment related ac uh, activities. We do encourage if you are wanting to prepare for interviews that you engage with something such as the big interview where you can practice your online interview skills and look at Career Hub which is I guess a, an entry point to the service here um, at La Trobe University where you can book appointments, uh, attend careers events and workshops um, and also have a look at the number of resources that are available to you online. Career Hub also has a job board component, so on a frequent basis, uh, employers want to reach out to students for particular opportunities, and those opportunities are generally listed on Career Hub. So check back on a regular basis to see what is available. Employer Connect is a really great website for grads, so there are also um, internships and opportunities up there. Uh, Unitemps is a recruitment agency online, so if you're looking for part-time work, um, that is another excellent um, part of your strategy. At the end of this webinar, I will touch on Career Ready Advantage, which is our employability program. A few different aspects in terms of the service, and please check with your local campus because some of the aspects of service will vary and the times um, that uh, you can access that service will change as well. So for students at Bandura, you can uh, book appointments uh, with us uh, via Career Hub. Uh, initially the 15 minute appointment which would cover reviews on cover letters, uh, employment documentation, resumes and so on. Uh, a 30 minute consultation would be for the bigger picture, careers uh, questions, so career options and so on. We don't actually find jobs for students or we don't write resumes, we are more a provision of advice in this area. Okay, so firstly, some information on the types of interviews. Most interviews will be face-to-face, -face, phone or video, um, and will generally follow uh, one or two questioning formats, so a combination of some of these styles. So a standard set of interview questions, so that might be questions such as your, you know, your strengths and weaknesses, um, tell me about yourself and so on. Um, and a behavioural style interview question, which is where you would provide specific examples to show your skills and experiences. So most will be a combination of both of these above styles. Preparation is actually key. So um, think about prior to attending uh, the interview on the day, think about the uh, ways in which you're going to communicate your skills. Research the organisation beforehand. So that includes interviewers as well, which you can, you can look those uh, interviewers up on LinkedIn, for example. Work out how you're going to get there, so your logistics, public transport um, or by car, etc. Allowing time for delays or finding a way is really quite important. Have a plan for, plan for what you're going to wear, so something professional um, and again be organised around that. Think about um, minimal jewellery, perfume, clean shaven and be well presented. Review the job description of or key selection criteria. That's, I guess, the key uh, area of preparation. Um, and start to think about some responses for uh, against those criteria points. And practice using the big interview, which is a mock interview tool. You can actually film yourself being interviewed, and it's a really good way of critiquing your performance. Um, more on the big interview, this is what the page looks like. Um, you can use your Latrobe student login for access here. Um, there are a number of sample questions that you can plug in um, and you can, as I said, see yourself being interviewed and the way in which you respond to questions. So it's a really great resource and tool for you in your uh, interview preparation. So some of the typical interview questions. The standard tell us about yourself. Um, 
you need to understand or understand how you're going to prepare and articulate your experiences in, in your story. Um, so that might be a brief sum up of who you are, why you chose your course, for instance, um, some of your experiences, just explaining briefly, things that you're interested in from a career point of view, um, if this is for a professional um, opportunity. Um, what do you like working with others? So give us give an example of perhaps where you've been in a team situation. You might um, you might call upon your university study as one of your examples. Think about strengths and weaknesses. Don't say that you don't have any weaknesses, but in identifying what they are, tell us what you're you're doing to overcome them. That's the the real key um, part in of, of answering this sort of question. So you are, have you undertaken extra training, or are you changing the way that you have approached different situations, etc. Why did you apply for the job? So think about that. Don't think about, oh, it's close to home or money. What are the reasons that you applied for the position? So be able to communicate that and think about how you might respond to that question beforehand. Show your research. So maybe it's the values or the clients the organisation works with or the profile or the industry sector. So be clear in what it is about your, you, what you actually know about the organisation have a look at their website. Um, have they been, they've been in the media recently? Are there any stories or any interesting uh, pieces of information that you can find out about them? So be able to answer a question if they ask you as to what do you know about us? So be able to answer some, some basic questions and have some understanding of what it is they do. I would also encourage you to have some questions that you can ask them. Often in an interview, uh, an employer will turn the tables and actually say, well, do you have any questions to ask us? Um, some suggestions for questions to prepare for that, that you can prepare for them uh, might be about the short-term goals for that position. Uh, so think about that, what, what the person would be expected to achieve on a short-term basis. Uh, the type of training that they might provide, um, getting an idea of the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the role, if they haven't already talked about that. And be aware of, of not asking questions that they have actually already covered. So you will need to ensure that you are listening. Um, if they do cover this, it will give you some general information. And it's usually uh, at the start of an interview. Think about the most important qualities for someone to excel in the role. So you might ask a question about that. So what does a high achiever or an achiever in this role look like? So what are the, the qualities and attributes that they would have? So that could be a really good question to ask them. Um, and then maybe some other questions have come up as a result of information they've given you in the interview, and that might um, be another question you, you can uh, think about. I do suggest though, or highly suggest, don't ask about salary. Um, this is not really the opportune time to ask about that. Uh, at some point that will come up, perhaps in say negotiations, once you're about to be offered the job, or but, but certainly on an initial interview, that's not a question that we would encourage you to ask. Okay, so behavioural questions, they feature in many job interviews these days. Um, highly likely you will get some form uh, of behavioural question or questions as part of your interview, um, most likely combined with your standard set of interview questions. So it is really important that you understand how best to answer those. Behavioural questions are really asking for you to give a response from something that you have done not something that you would do. So it's not a hypothetical response on how you would uh, behave in a particular situation. It's actually asking for an example from your past. So review the selection criteria uh, or advertisement um, to identify the areas that you might be likely to get questions. So if there are key selection criteria around communication skills or problem solving, I would suggest it's quite likely that you will get some questions around those areas. So think of uh, examples of things you've done that might illustrate your problem solving or communication skills. Some sectors, say for example allied health or education, often have very specific key selection criteria where you might need to, dem to show where you have demonstrated a couple of attributes um, and particularly sometimes those attributes might be asked as some of the same question. So typical competencies that are being addressed in a behavioural interview, as I mentioned, problem solving, communication skills. How are you in a team? 
So what are some team examples you've been involved with and, and what was your contribution? Okay, I'm dealing with difficult customers perhaps. That might be when you were applying particularly for say a part-time role. Um, your initiative, your organisational skills, conflict resolu resolution, um, your interpersonal awareness, um, so maybe situations where you've had to modify your behaviour to deal with others. Perhaps your flexibility as well. And as I mentioned just before, some disciplines will have some specific ones. Um, for example, with teaching, it might be your ability to program plan, your managing, managing of discipline within the classroom, perhaps inclusive teaching practice. And with allied health, often um, examples might ask you um, to illustrate, say, your patient-centred care uh, or have, you know, your experience in working as part of a multidisciplinary team. So the STAR approach, which is really the framework where you're going to use as your response to these behavioural questions. It's based upon a, a structure of situation, task, action and result. And again, referring to something that you have done in the past. So it's describing a sit challenge or a situation that you found yourself in. Typically, these questions might start off with describe a situation or tell us about a time where you've done something or give an example. So listen out for those types of um, question starters um, and they're usually going to ask you for that specific. The task component is what, did, what have you had to do or achieve in that situation? The situation and the task together are really giving the, the interviewer a sense of the context you've been involved with. So they're really necessary so that the action and the result will actually make sense. Um, and the action is the really pivotal part of your response. You could spend up to 80% um, of your whole response to the question on your action. It's the what you actually did in the situation. And of course, as a result of what you actually did, we have a, um, the outcome. So what happened as a result of those actions? So that, again, really is important. Think of something that has a positive action to it. So an example of the STAR. So organisational skills. Uh, typically something that is asked in an interview to find out how you manage your time, how you self-organise. So give us an example where you've had multiple tasks to complete and tell us how you went about it. And you can see up there, there's a situation during my time at X and it gives us the context. The task, a little bit more contextual information. So it, it, employers are really trying to assess uh, or identify how you've actually uh, organised in prioritising how you've dealt with contingencies. So you've talked about some of the things you had to do before you went into responding with the action. So the action would be looking at things like how you've identified what is the most urgent, how do you adhere to deadlines. So that is what our interviewers are trying to assess. So the steps you took uh, in organising to ensure things were, were um, able to be done at the time they needed to be done is that action. Okay, how have you estimated time taken for tasks? How have you uh, had a backup plan for those, as I said, contingencies or things that might happen unexpectedly? And how do you reevaluate and maybe reorder tasks to accommodate that? The result, um, again, really necessary. We want to know what happened as a result of those actions. So think about giving a full example across the range of those different things calling upon experiences perhaps in your volunteer work or, or other part-time roles or maybe your university study. So think of examples across um, other areas of your life which might illustrate against these criteria points. Okay, so another example, problem solving. And give me an example of a difficult problem you've encountered and what you did to solve it. So again, we've got our situation and our task, took over as the role of president of a commerce students club with an event. The task needed to be, uh, or the task was uh, some um, drop off in memberships. So the task was in needing to identify how to gain new members. The action was what was taken to overcome that problem. Okay, so what did the person do? So the, they came up with a plan of activities, they met with some schools, so we've got a sense of some of the things that they did and the outcome. So what happened as a result? Okay, so this sort of question is really wanting to know um, your awareness of options that are available to you. So looking at problems and solving it, the things you took into consideration, 
Have you taken a risky or careless approach as well? Have you thought critically about the options? So I guess that's a sense of your analytical skills. And how have you used the resources available to you in solving problems um, when perhaps the path forward might not have been clear? And it's also, I guess, a way of um, a way of showing your creativity as well. So again, a really good um, situation or a really good response will show elements of those those components in problem solving. So prior to the interview, you've done your research and the day arrives. So a few a few things just to be aware of. Arrive a few minutes early. Don't be sort of running right to the second when your interview is due to start. You need some time just to mentally collect your thoughts. Turn off your phone before the interview. There's nothing worse than a phone ringing. Even if you don't answer it, never have your phone ringing during an interview. Read through any notes that you have whilst you're waiting. So maybe some last minute prompts, um, your last minute research on uh, your, your information on the research you've done about the organisation, some of your examples that you may have in the back of your mind to respond to particular types of questions. Shake hands with the interviewers and use their names and look them in the eye. So body language is really important. Okay, during the interview, no crossed arms, sitting up straight in the chair, having eye contact with your interviewer. Seek clarification with questions you don't understand. So before answering, if you're not sure, uh, ask you know, if they could rephrase a question or I'm not quite sure what you mean, um, could you ask it in a different way? That's quite acceptable. Take your time, don't rush in to respond because the interviewer can still be, um, could still be asking the question. It is better to pause, collect your thoughts, think of the best response or example to answer that question. So take your time. Don't ask about salary. So really, really important. There will be other opportunities for those things to be clarified. And finally, thank the interviewer for their time at interviewer at, at interview. So again, lovely to meet them. Um, you need to make sure that again, you've got nice body language, looking them in the eye to close off the interview. So again, think of those things. It is really quite important um, in the way that you present face to face. So a little bit about phone interviews. Um, take these seriously. Ensure that you've done your preparation. Um, so these are these are often interviews that the students think they don't have to put plan or prepare as they would be for, say, a face to face. It is equally as important. And more and more, the phone interview is the way in which a shortlist is conducted. Um, because they can, employers can do this really quickly um, and they can communicate with a big bunch of uh, applicants um, much quicker than they would be on a face-to-face -face basis. And it's a really great opportunity to showcase your verbal communication skills. So treat it really seriously. Make sure that you have a space free of distractions and be ready for the interviewer's call um, at a desk or a table. And Listen, the difficulty with phone interviews often is that you cannot visually see the person asking the question, but don't dominate the conversation and pause rather than um, stepping in when, again, they may be still asking a question or saying something. It doesn't hurt to have your resume close by and some paper uh, handy to write down questions and perhaps even some prompts uh, as to some of your questions or perhaps the research that you've done on the organisation if they ask those questions. Use clear expression and slow down your communication. Again, really important because you don't have that visual medium to guide you in, in when to, to pause and when the person is going to ask you something. With video interviews, again, treat them um, with equal importance and um, preparation as you would a face-to-face -face interview. It is really a face-to-face -face interview, just in a slightly different context. Dress professionally, so avoid bright colours, but think of what might come across well um, in a video setting. So no distractions, really important, again, as you would have for a, um, a phone interview, be seated at a desk in front of your computer. Um, Think of your background, particularly for a video interview. So no washing, drying or mess or children or pets, television or other noise um, that could distract you. Check your inter uh, internet connection prior. Make sure that all your tech is working. There's nothing worse than having to fiddle with a computer. It won't give a good uh, indication of your technology skills if you're fiddling around or you're having some, um, having some issues with connectivity. 
And again, with another suggestion is perhaps have on your um, computer screen, your laptop, um, and something at eye level with some prompts for questions or responses. So again, you can do that um, in, an, in a video interview. Make sure your webcam's working and it's positioned correctly. Um, check that your browser tabs and other things are not open. Have a pen and notepad handy again and a copy of your resume and nod and smile to show interest as you would in a face-to-face -face interview. And again, put your phone on silent mode. Okay, so that's the, that's the end of our webinar on preparing for interviews. A little about the Career Ready Advantage Award. This is our employability program that was, um, can, what was it, put together as a result of some research um, by one of the big four organisations into what they were looking at in graduates. Um, as a result of that information, um, a program was put together across three core areas of professional learning, practical experience and career portfolio designed to build your skills, your employability skills. Um, across a few areas of activity. So for example, professional learning, you would undertake some courses, um, say some LinkedIn learning courses and La Trobe online modules or some other type of courses outside of university. Practical experience, volunteering, paid employment, part-time jobs, and a number, a number of employability focused um, areas such as subjects in your course um, or other activities. Career portfolio is really where you are developing those skills in learning how to communicate your skills and experiences to employers. So by learning to write a winning CV or handle a job interview, and perhaps it's putting together a cover letter or uh, your LinkedIn, for example. There's a range of different activities listed on the LMS. I encourage you to have a look and see uh, what's up there. You basically will submit um, an application uh, again and some evidence against each of these activities as you undertake it um, to work towards firstly the silver component, the award, complete some additional activities towards gold and then some additional again for platinum. So it's really, I guess, a program that will help to set you apart from other graduates um, in building those um, employability skills so that you are more job ready um, once you've finished your study. Something just to be aware of, this workshop will count as one activity under professional learning and automatically added to your award. And the career portfolio actually uh, has an activity which is a video interview. Um, so you would need to go to latrobe.biginterview.com and go to assignment and enter the code that's on the screen there into the assignment code and record and submit your activity for assessment. Um, so think about um, participating in the award. There's certainly um, a lot of benefits that you can under, uh, that you can gain um, and improve your employability skills. Thank you for listening to this webinar. I hope that it has been valuable in learning um, how to prepare for interviews. If you have any uh, or need any additional assistance, please engage with your local careers team. Thank you.